So Tojo, can you hear me? Yes, this I is, can. This is our third session. Uh, we are trying to understand uh, how Python deal with variables uh, on the declaration side and initialization side, okay? So uh, typically sometimes because uh, Python does not have declaration uh, in the exam, they will ask us to, to write a declaration as a comment. So if we want to write comments in Python, um, uh, I think if I can recall in CSR, they used two, two slashes like that, but here in Python, we use um, that way to do these uh, comments. Yes. If we want to write comments, okay? So now look please here. So this X is a variable, okay? And I give it 10. So uh, Python uses a, a smart way to detect that X is actually carrying an integer, an integer value, okay? An integer value is just, just a whole number without any decimals. Is that clear? Okay. Yes. It can also have minus. Good. So if I write x equal 10, also uh, Python will smartly know, even though I didn't tell him this is a string. So do you know what the, what, you know the difference between an integer and a string, right? Yes. As okay. A string can't be used for operations. Yes, so we use, we, we are not able to operate uh, anything arithmetic on strings, right? Yes, yes. We, we are able to use it for showing messages, uh, for for storing um, data in, in a files. That is that is most of the uses of the string format, okay? So now, uh, now 10 is a string and Python is able to detect that, okay? Good, okay. Uh, did you know about a float before? Uh, yes, I did. Okay. So if I, uh, okay, let's have a look at this uh, line of code. No, uh, before that. Am I writing correct? Yes. Okay. Do you think my code will run? Well, um, the, uh, the name of the variable, I think, changed. But normally, yes, I think so. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So did, did you notice any difference here? Did you notice what I, the, I, I did change just now? You changed um, the first letter from a capital letter to, from a um, change to a capital to lower letter. Case. Yes. yes. So, so it is a case sensitive. So if you notice here, okay, uh, I'm able to say some like that. And I can say, this one is a bit uh, annoying. Type was type for run. Is that clear to you? Why is it like yes. that? Yes. Okay, perfect. So if you see that line of code, actually that was what we're trying to do in the assembly uh, uh, language just now. We have it in three lines, right? We said, oh, we want to load 
uh, the content of the first variable into the accumulator and then add um, and then add the second uh, variable content into whatever in the accumulator and then store that. So that's what we're trying to, to do here, but we just do it in one line actually. Okay, actually a few lines also, it's, it's still a few lines, yes. But it's more readable and more understandable when we write it in high high level language like that. Okay, Dojo, can you still yeah. follow with me? Yes, I agree. Okay, good. Let's move to the second. So, um, let me try to understand with you. Uh, can you understand these three lines of code? I can. Three, four, five. Can you? Yes. Yes, I can. Okay. Do you think it will run? Um. Yes, it should. Yes. Okay. Let's let's see. So it runs, right? Yes. Okay. And do you, do you understand what this float uh, uh, function does? Well, uh, normally, um, x would be an integer, but since it's a float, when you divide it by three, it can have decimals. Um, it turns into ten point zero, so that as um, it can have be a decimal number. Okay. Yes. Yes, you are correct. So actually, it's true that that x um should be should be an integer in this case, but uh, but. Again, this function will take whatever, um, and what it will take a string or even a number, and it will convert it to a, a decimal number. Okay, um, and uh, here Z will be able to carry a decimal uh, uh, number for us. Okay, so that's uh, that is whatever printed here. So, can you can you then complete? Can you see these two lines? Do you understand what is what is the result? Here. Um, I will essentially round the round version of Z. Mm -hmm. Because it turns it back to an integer, so it has to round to the nearest integer. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. But but it but wait, integer will not round. Uh, just uh, around there is maybe another functions, but to be to be specific, you, you what you are telling is correct, except that the round part. It is true that we will get some part here, but we will not round. It means that we only will remove uh, uh, all this decimal okay. part, and we only take the um and th that part, the the integer part, okay? okay. And there is functions that we will learn that can give us the the decimal part. And ignore that uh, integer part, okay? Yeah, so okay, that's good. That's good. Um, mm -mm. okay. Uh, let me see. I don't want to. Okay, let me see. Let me see what we can do. So now we know how to. Uh huh. Okay. Do you know what this line do actually? Um, it allows the user to enter something after that text. Okay, perfect. So uh, this input command, anything that comes from the input command, even if you put an integer, it will be treated as a string. So, okay. okay. So we we cannot do any arithmetic operation uh, on radius. Or whatever whatever comes out from the input, unless we convert it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the code is running. Actually, I can I can try to see if it runs. Are you able to read? Um, so um, typically, typically, uh, you don't really need to. Um, you don't really need in this exam to be able to troubleshoot codes and the problem of the code, but you need to write a working code, okay? 
um, somehow it to some level, not not so much advanced level. Okay, certain mistakes they still can pass it for you. Um, but but since we are learning, let's learn it the correct way. Can you start? Can you try to to detect what is the issue actually? Um. Well, it's saying that it can't multiply the sequence by non-int of type string. So since um, the number you entered, since that uh, the input is still a string, the string can't be used in multiplication with integers. Very smart reply. Perfect. You are perfect. Okay. So it means that somehow we need to convert this either to integer like that or yes. to float. So we can do that in two steps or on one step. So we can we can say like that. Or we can also do it. Um, we can do it on another line. So it's up to you. Um, it's up to your preference, but if we do it like that, it will work. It should work. Let's see. So you see? So actually, we still missing another line here. Uh, we actually need to take from the user another input. Um, that input is, we should call it lens. And And we should multiply here lens. Okay. Ten, maybe twenty. So that should be the result. Um, so, so that is, is that clear to you? Yes. It okay. Is. Good. So, do you know what's the meaning a constant? Um. Constant, constant in, in, in a programming language. So did you hear about constants in uh, C-sharp? I think so, yes. Okay, so do you know that constant, once you define it, you cannot change it all over your code? Yes. Yeah. Okay, do you know why is it, why is it make constant in the first place? And why certain variables need to be constant? Do you know that? No, I don't. No. Okay, so uh, this is uh, okay. How to say it? in real in real programming? As we said, we we might end up with programs that is ten thousand lines, and we want as much as we can to reduce the chances to create bugs or mistakes in our in our own coding. Okay, um, so to do that. Certain things that we we wish not to change all over the code, we need to define them as constant. In other programming language, sometimes they use something like that, okay? Um, and some other programming language, they use the word final, okay? But uh, here we just, yeah, Python is a special language, okay? <laughs> Um, so once you define uh, you find a constant, then it should not be changed all over your code. Is that clear to you? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I will move to something uh, fast to 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 complete the definition of what we have done here, and then I will start also looking into the pseudo code. Uh, give me a chance, please. Okay, let me see here. Yeah. Okay, now you can see my screen. So um, that is a kind of um, a compiler for the pseudocode. It's not an official compiler, okay? Um, uh, normally, the pseudocode you just write, you can just write it on a piece of paper or even on a text editor, uh, like a notepad or something, and then that's it. But uh, I feel that uh, if we do that, actually you are uh, somehow um, 
uh, it make it there is no life when you're not dealing with something that can show output and input and and show a result to you there is no life in that okay and, and so you don't know what you are writing is actually 100% correct or not so that is not an official one as i said because there is no official uh, compiler uh, for for pseudocode uh, uh, people who are studying for ig uh, many of them um, face problems and, and see that uh, this is very hard to deal with something that cannot show an output to us. So they come up with something like that. So that is not an official um, uh, version of, of, of pseudocode. They make it only for the IGC. Okay? Okay. 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 Yes. So let us talk about here. Um, uh, a few while ago, I, I told you about uh, declaration of variables. Okay. So we, when we want to declare a variable in pseudocode, we have to use the word declare here. I know the screen is black, so maybe it's not so perfect, but uh, let me try my best. So this is the word declare, and this is a type of, of variable that we're trying to create. It's an integer variable, and this is the name of the variable. Okay, so we are able actually this thing is actually crazy. So we are able to uh, somehow uh, define two variables in one line, counter and mark. Both okay. of them is uh, of type integer. Okay? Okay, yes. So that is declaration. We're just telling, please reserve a place in the memory. Uh, uh, for two variables of type integer. The space in the memory reserved for the integer is different from the space that is reserved for strings, different from the space reserved for floats or decimal points. Integer is one of the low, uh, smallest uh, area in the memory that can be reserved, okay? Yes, okay. Okay, so again, we look at the second line. So he's trying to declare a variable called total, and this is of type real. So real is, is a type of, uh, of variables that can hold a decimal point. So consider it equivalent to float in Python just now we see. Okay? Yes, exactly. That, okay, so we, we see here, you see how he deal with a, with a mark variable. He's assigning something to it. So again, declaration and then assignment. Or we can say initialization. He initialized the variable mark to zero. Uh, in certain languages, we prefer to start things with a, with a known state. So we don't want to, to start running our code before we, we initialize our variables. Um, if, if it is uh, integer, we put zero. If it is a string, we put uh, double uh, double quotations like that. Um, we can we can we are not defining a string here, but uh, if we are defining a string str, I would say that it should should look like like that. We put an empty string, so we know that this string variable, even though we didn't declare it yet here, uh, no, we have actually a name. So if you look here. This is a string variable. Yeah. Okay. And we initialize it, or yeah, we initialize it to an empty string. So it's it, it's empty. It doesn't have anything. Okay. Thank you. Good. Okay. Um. So we also have um, two things that we can output things to the screen in in uh, pseudo code. So in pseudo code, we use output. Because, because uh, if you see uh, previously in the Python, we have the command input. The input also can show something to the user. But, uh, but the input here in pseudocode does not show anything to the user. So we always use, uh, need to use um, uh, the output command. So output, so normally before I take something from the user, I will initi initiate uh, a message to the user and tell him, please enter something, or enter a mark, or enter a variable, okay? 
Is that clear? Fine, sir. Okay, good. I will try to remove that and write input mark. I try to print mark after that and see. So can you see my screen? He asked me to in, uh, to input mark. Okay, yes. Okay. So that is what he output at the end. Okay, uh, of course it's not very clear um, because we didn't put something like that. And um, because that is not an official thing so it is actually um, not so fast so can you see the output yes using yes. the print okay good good um, so i will uh, i will stop what i am trying to do here um, except that um, Okay, let me let me do something for, here first. Can you um, can you think with me, please? If I want to write, uh, if I want to write uh, the code, the assembly code that we have seen to add um, to add two numbers and store the two numbers in uh, some variable. Can you tell me? Can you think with me? What is the steps that we need to do in the pseudocode? I know we didn't have too much things in the pseudocode. But we are dealing with integers. Can you can you think with me? What well, we need? Yeah. We need to declare the variables first. Okay. What should I declare oh, yeah. here? Um number one. First. Okay, yes, first and second as integers. Okay, like that? Yes. Okay, what else? Um then uh, to add them So how to how to add them? Um you would do first plus print first plus second. Uh, okay, uh, you want to print? I, I write a print command? Yes, and then first plus second. Okay. Oh, you want to print a first plus second uh, as a, okay, yeah, we can do that. Let me think, let me think. Yes, I think you can do that. Yeah, let's see. Uh, first plus second, okay. We should do that. Uh, yes, I so yes. Okay, let's see how it works. Why he doesn't accept it, in your opinion? Um. Then after that, first. Is I, I write first. here or here on number yeah. or line 14 in or between. 16 in between 14. Here. okay perfect I should write what and then first um needs to be assigned to a number and it, and um with the R yes and second as well I put ten so, yes okay and then second okay. can be maybe eight okay Sorry, yeah. Okay, eat. Okay, yeah, should try. Okay, so now it works. Okay. So, uh, w w yeah, okay, you, you already understand why it doesn't work at the first time, right? Yes, I, they didn't, they weren't uh, assigned to any numbers. Okay, good. 
And uh, typically, uh, if we want to replicate what we have done on the assembly code 100%, I would say I would add here some. So I will define three variables, okay? And um, I will not, uh, I, I, will, I mean, what you have done is smart, but uh, be aware that uh, um, in the pseudo code, uh, you really need to, how to say, it's a ba very basic, uh, basic way to, to, to represent algorithms uh, uh, or, or software that you need to write. Uh, and most of the time, most of the time, not all the time, but in not in simpler program like that, but in what we're going to write, we still need to store things uh, 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 slowly. So, so the purpose normally is not to print something to the screen. The no normally, the, the purpose is to store something inside the variable. So normally this kind of operation, you should do it this way. Okay. So same like what he have done is assembly code. He created the third variable, he add the first and the second to, and store the result in the third variable. And then at the end, this is what he can do. He just prints some, okay? And it will be the same. The result is the same. Okay. Yes. Is that clear? Yeah, so I can. Oh, okay, good. <clears throat> Wait, I can you see my screen? Yes, okay. Okay. Mm -mm. Okay. Um, so that is a variable declaration. So again, he is uh, he's uh, showing to us here uh, what's the difference between a pseudocode declarations and uh, and constant declaration in in pseudocode and Python. So that is how it looks like in Python. Okay, and uh, that is how. Uh, That's how we define constants here in in uh, in Python. We 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 make it all um, capital letters, and but but again in uh, pseudocode, it's actually it looked like that. We had to put the word constant before we we define uh, uh, we define a, a constant variable in in pseudocode. I think you this is clear to you, right? Yes. Okay, and you see here we are able to define two variables. Uh, and even initialize them in one line. Is that clear to you? Yes. Okay, good. Okay. And so uh, this is the different data types actually that we have. Um, so in pseudocode, we have integer and um, how, how to say Python, we don't need to define anything like we said. Real, uh, real is, a, is a number with a decimal point. And as you can see here in Python, this is having a decimal point. Okay. And we have a, a char or a character. So that is in, in pseudocode. And that is how it looks like in Python. Okay. Okay, do you know the ASCII table? Um, I've heard of it, yes. Okay, so I later, characters. no problem. We, we, we don't need to memorize the ASCII table, but you need to know how it, uh, it operates. Um, because sometimes you might need to use uh, things like, for example, if you want to know uh, the character here, it is a capital letter or a small letter, um, then and most probably, especially in, uh, in pseudocode, you might need to to use some tricks or your understanding from the ASCII table to be able to recognize it. And I will show you how. Um, mm -hmm. So that is a character. It's only one, uh, one character here. And we always use a single quotation. And we str with a string, we use um, yeah either a single quotation or double quotation, but that is uh, more than one character. Okay, so again, um, with Python, 
Okay, with Python, we don't need to worry about defining a string or anything, but in pseudocode, we need to do that. So we have the type Boolean. Did you hear about Boolean before? Yes, true and false. Okay, true and false. Okay, good. Um, so that is uh, one thing. Uh, we only have now uh, something like um, less than nine minutes remaining. Um, so, so see, um, what the how the brain works? Uh, it works that um, you, if I tell you something now, and then we finish it, and then we move to different topics, totally different topics, and we don't cover it um, in in, in uh, upcoming sessions. So you will find that uh, your brain, uh, especially if you don't revise what we have taken, will tend to forget that. So uh, there is certain techniques that uh, uh, like, uh, people, when they are lecturing or even teaching, they they tend to overcome that by by teaching on a small slices. Okay, uh, so I will give you little information about uh, certain things every in every lesson it is a burden on me as a as a as a person who are teaching uh, but it helps you on the long run so i'm i'm doing now a spaced uh, 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 learning for you uh, so it means that i i give your brain small slices from information uh, so that you are able to build you you build your own links inside your brain okay uh, that only happen by spaced learning Okay, good. Yes. So, okay, let me talk about uh, a new, totally new topic. Okay, uh, tot totally new no topic. Only we only cover a little bit about it. Did you hear about databases before? Did you deal in in C sharp with databases? Um, I think so. Yeah. You think you think yes or no? Well, is it just? I'm not sure if I I don't know the name. I'm, I'm, I might know what it is. I'm not sure. Okay. So did you hear about uh, um, uh, MySQL or even um, uh, Microsoft Access? Uh, so about even SQL Server, SQLite? This is all in the name of, of real databases that you, you're able even to deal with in, uh, in, in C Sharp. Uh, also, yes. there is popular one like Oracle. Um, that's also a, a very popular database. Um, um, MySQL used to be an open source database. Uh, do you know what I mean, open source? No. It, it, it is okay. Uh, so open source means that um, the source code of how they make this database is open to everybody. So everybody can can contribute and add uh, and add features and uh, and write code for that open source project. Okay. Uh, closed source project means that the product is owned by a company and it hides the source code for it from other people. It's considered like a trade secret to it. Okay. So, okay. Uh, okay. Let me explain what is a database. Um, uh, people used to save information inside uh, files, text files. Okay. But when we are talking about a uh, million of records, Okay, and uh, certain things that we want to enforce on that million of records uh, in, in text files become not not possible anymore. If I if I want to store uh, the records of the students inside a text file, and I want to make sure that there is no duplicate records, I cannot enforce that in a text file. It's not possible. So they come up with uh, with uh, Databases. Databases is is a um, uh, how to say grouping of information uh, in an arranged and structured manner, uh, where they are able to enforce certain rules on that information. So, let me share with you how how information uh, should look like. So, in in all databases, we have something called tables. So uh, in, in, in this course, you will only learn about a database that have a single table. But in later on in the real life, actually, uh, we have multiple tables. And 
tables can have relation to, to uh, each other. So this is how a table looks like. So the table is cons consists of rows and uh, they call it records. And each record have certain amount of fields like that. Okay, so that is a row and this is a column. Okay, so what can actually, what can that be? Actually, it's not clear what, what you are saying here. Um, but let's look here about something real that we can store. So that is a patient table. Um, you store in the table the first name of the patient, family name of the patient, and the date of admission, the consultant who follow up the case, the ward number, the bed number. That is a, that is a sample of a, a real table that we can use. So that is a database table that I create. And um, I even can share with you later um, um, a, a real table for that is really used on a website. Okay. Um, so So that is a record. Each record is for a separate patient. And then for a hospital, you can expect to have a, a few millions records for, for patients. So each record will be structured in the same, same manner. First name, family name, date of admission, consultant, and so on. So all this will be filled in with different information for uh, different patients. Does this make sense to you? Yes. Okay. Okay, um, so again, as we said, uh, as we said, okay, uh, databases is used to store information. Let me here minimize that. So it means that we are able to store patient uh, information in a hospital, uh, student information in a school, for instance, and when we store it in a uh, in a, a database, um, we 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 ensure that uh, everybody can access that information because databases can be stored on on servers. You know what I mean, a server. Um, all right. So so do you know that the ser a server is um, a place to store something that can be accessed with uh, with a lot of people? So yes, if we yes. store if we store a database on a server, it means that we give access. Of course, not every information that we store on a server is exposed to everybody. But it means that when you store a database uh, of a hospital on a on a uh, server and we connect the server to the internet and we give access, it means that people from different hospitals or even from different locations can access uh, the information about the um, uh, the patients. And, and maybe, for example, um, you want the consultant to follow up with, uh, with whatever happening in the hospital so he can use his phone to access the, the patient information. So that cannot happen without having a database. Okay, I will, I will stop here. Uh, we are approaching okay. uh, our last minute in the session. Okay, so tell me please, do you want us to slow uh, to slow down or to make our things uh, slightly faster? Um, do you have any difficulty in following me up? No, I don't. Okay, so we slow or we move faster, or it's it's a, it's okay now. Maybe it's slightly faster, but to be honest, yeah, it's okay. Now. I mean, uh, you, I need to slow down or I need to move faster. Uh, maybe just slightly faster. That's okay, not much. perfect. Perfect, perfect. Okay. So see you next session. Okay. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for your time.